Okay, I'm ready, Mr. Engineer. Let him have it. I what's going on? In case you didn't know, it's Bodega Sports and we are back. NFL Weekly Review Giants Post Game. This week is gonna be the pregame, and I'll have a post game, of course, after the game. The game today, or should I say this week, I do apologize. It's on a Monday night. And by the time you are listening to this Bodega uh, Sports NFL Review podcast, it's game day. Yes, it's game day. I'd like to apologize for last week's podcast not airing due to technical difficulties that we had here at the Hood News Media Studios. But I'm back and you should be listening to this. Yes, you should. I'm flying solo today. My co-host not around right now. Shout out to Ice Baby as she runs around doing her own thing today. I'm here with you. And we're going to talk some football. And I'll keep it light and brief. And we'll discuss some things right quick and keep it pushing. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to my partner in crime, Ken Dog. We do Bodega Sports NBA edition and we got a doozy coming up this week. So make sure you turn into that one. But here we go. So Thursday. Thursday's game. Broncos cards. Things don't change. The Cardinals got smacked by the Broncos. Broncos not a good team. Neither are the cards. Cards are struggling. Chargers beat the Titans. One point game. Controversial. Keenan Allen went off, lost his marbles. He was looking like my man Odell out there, all emotional, kicking a pile on. Did he have a reason to? But of course, the rest are doing a horrible job this year. I'm not surprised. But hey, what do they say? Keep playing, right? You can't control the refs. You got to keep playing. Then we had the the Browns against the Bucks. Buccaneers win on a field goal. I tell you, these two teams are on the opposite sides of the road, meaning that the Bucks, who are supposed to be a pretty good team, I think they're on their way down. They were supposed to be a, dec- a decent team with, with the team that they have, but they're struggling against a team like the Browns with Baker Mayfield, the first pick in last year's draft. He's showing out his ass. He's doing his thing. The Browns are on the come up. The Bucks, they're on their way down. Then let's talk about the Panthers and the Eagles. Man, oh man. Talk about Super Bowl hangover. It looks like the Eagles are having issues with their team. They can't get it together. They are now three and four. Why aren't people talking about how the defending Super Bowl champions who they thought were going to repeat, are having trouble. Something's going on over there nobody wants to talk about. And I don't think the Eagles will repeat as Super Bowl champions. I don't even think they'll make the playoffs the way they're going. They lost to a Panthers game, who's a Panthers team who's a good team. Cam Newton, you know, he's an animal, so he's going to do what he do. Then we got the Vikings and the Jets. Whoo! Vikings whooped that ass. Jet fans, what's up with your Jets? You guys are thinking that this new quarterback that you got, Sam Donald, the quarterback of the future, is supposed to take you to the promised land. But same old Jets. Then you got the Lions and the Dolphins. The Lions won that game. These two teams, you know, the Dolphins started off strong. And the Lions started off like bums. The roles have reversed. I don't think neither one of these two teams are any good. But you will see down the road and see what happens. Then you got the Patriots and the Bears. This, to me, was the game of the week. Okay? They went back and forth. 
they went back and forth, which says a lot about the Bears. I think the Bears are going to make the playoffs this year. And the Patriots, they still pulled off the game. But, man, man, oh, man. This team looks like at any moment now, for the first time ever since the Bill Belichick era, that they could break down and just be over at any moment. Brady's still not looking at his age. He's still looking pretty good out there as a quarterback. But the rest of the team, man. And your man Gordon, Josh Gordon, doing his thing ever since he got traded from the Browns to the Patriots. Sometimes all you need is a little change of scenery to become the player that everyone thinks you were or are going to be. But that was a good game. Bears, yo, Mitchell Trubisky is something else, man. Let me tell you, a lot of people didn't, didn't like him coming out of college. I did. And he's, he's doing his thing. He's doing his thing. Now we got the Bills and the Colts. We all know the Bills are a disaster. I spit on their logo. Yup, I'm being disrespectful. They got a bum-ass quarterback. Then the bum-ass quarterback goes down. Then they put, they bring in an old-ass quarterback. And won't give Kaepernick a chance. Won't even give him a tryout. But whatever, man. I ain't going to get into all of that. Just know that's how I feel. And if you're trying to tell me that a bum-ass quarterback and an old-ass quarterback are better than Kaepernick, who's sitting out there waiting for a job, who works out every day, waiting to get an opportunity, you're trying to tell me you can't give, me, give him five minutes of your time? Collusion like a motherfucker. I said it. Collusion like a motherfucker. So fuck the Bills. Thank God the cards won. Then you got the Texans and the Jags. Interesting. Texans. Supposed to be an okay team. With Deshaun Watson and J.J. Watts leading the charge. They look regular to me. There's nothing that they're doing that could tell me any different. They're like in the middle bottom of the pack. Not even the middle top. The middle bottom of the pack. One day they have a good game. One day they have a bad game. They need to make up their mind. You want to play or you don't want to play. And then the Jags. Interesting about the Jags. They lost. They got issues in the locker room. The press went in there after the game. And players are holding each other back. Cursing. Ready to get out of each other's necks. You know what that means. Dissension. The team that was supposed to make a run at the Patriots this year. Because of their defense, not because of their offense. Well, maybe, maybe their offense, but because I say that because their offense is good with the running back, Leonard Fournette, but he's hurt. And then you got the quarterback who they just gave an enormous contract to, who didn't deserve it because he's a bum. And he can't get it done. They can't score. They need a quarterback. My suggestion? Call the New York Giants. Call the Giants. We're not going anywhere. We all know that. Eli Manning needs to be somewhere where he could be protected so he could throw the ball. That's the one thing the Jags have. It's an offensive line. They could protect. They could run. And I think Eli Manning on the Jaguars will push the Patriots to the brink. Maybe turn the season around. Are the Giants willing to do that? I don't know. Are the Jags willing to Go after Eli. You know, Coughlin's over there. He's running the show. Me being Coughlin, seeing everything that's going on in New York, I pick up the phone and I call the general manager and be like, hey, let's talk about Eli. And I'll tell you, that Jack's team will turn it around. Guaranteed. Let's move on. Saints and Ravens. Saints won. Man, the Saints are looking like killers this year. Your man Drew Brees threw for his 500th touchdown. And, you know, this guy's old, but he's like another Tom Brady. I wonder he's in the TB12, you know, workout regimen. Got it going on, you know what I'm saying? Who knows? But, yeah, Drew Brees looking like a young buck out here throwing touchdowns left and right. They beat the Ravens. The Ravens are a decent team. They're not scrubs. You know, when I said middle or the bottom for the uh, Texans, these guys are the middle or the top. 
So we'll see what happens. Then you got the bum ass Cowboys against the Redskins, and the Redskins took care of business. So I don't know what's going on with the Cowboys. I know that Dax and uh, your guy, Elliot, were supposed to be the saviors of this team. But how can you do that when you don't have no receivers? You know? Your man Elliot can't do it by himself. Dax don't look like the same old quarterback that everybody thought he was going to be. He looked like the quarterback I said he was. A bum. Yeah, he does certain things okay. But when Elliot ain't doing his thing, <laughs> Zeke, Zeke don't run the ball good. Dax, Dax don't throw the ball good. Plus, he don't got no receivers. I don't care what they say. So, you know, to see them struggle as well, that brings joy into my life because my team sucks. Then you got the Rams and the 49ers. The Rams. My picks to win the Super Bowl this year the way they're looking right now. And I say right now because you don't know. But football is very funny. One injury could cost you the whole year. But the Rams right now, man, they look unbeatable. They got everything. Defense, offense, running back, quarterback. You know, how do you beat a team like that, right? You have to play dirty. And I don't mean dirty where you hurting somebody. You got to get dirty in the trenches. Get dirty. Get physical with them. But they are the most physical team right now. So, and they whoop up. They beat the 49ers. So, I don't know, man. I think the 49ers with Ty Gurley and Jeff Goff. Goff, I don't know what the fuck his name is. He there. They doing their thing. And I think that they will be the ones to win the Super Bowl this year, the way they're looking. But you never know. You know, remember the Patriots went undefeated and still lost the Super Bowl to the New York Football Giants. So, you never know. And then we had the game, the Sunday night game, which was the Bengals and the Chiefs. Chiefs are the team that I want to say, okay, they're going to be the ones to dethrone New England, right? But Andy Reid's the coach. Andy Reid's the coach. And they, they, they whooped up on the Bengals, who have been having a good season this year, and everybody thinks that they're going to make a good playoff run. But they keep getting exposed every time they play a good team. The Chiefs are definitely making the playoffs, and the Chiefs, might be the team to beat the Patriots, but there's still that question mark. Can't Andy Reid be the coach to take them over the hump? Because it seems like he can't do it with any team. I mean, he took the Eagles to the Super Bowl, but they still couldn't win that either. So, I don't know. But they got weapons. Mahomes, Hunt, all these guys. Kelsey, they, 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 they are a good team. My Super Bowl right now, week six, would be the Rams and the Chiefs. Would it be something everybody want to watch? Yes. not The Rams because they're from L.A. The Chiefs not so much because they're from Kansas City, but it'll be interesting because it's two good teams with two good quarterbacks, two good running games, two good receivers. The Rams got the better defense. But the Chiefs can make some noise if they were to play them. One is undefeated. The other one is, you know, they lost. the Chiefs were lost one game. But that's definitely right now what the Super Bowl would look like if we were to go by their records. And Pat Mahomes, man, the quarterback for the Chiefs, he's something special, man. He just keeps throwing touchdowns. I, I don't think there's no one that can stop him. And that's why I would love to watch the Rams and the Chiefs in the Super Bowl. Right now, though, I don't know about a couple of weeks, six weeks from now, or what is it? No, I'm sorry, eight weeks from now when the Super Bowl is played. I don't know. We'll see. We will see. We will see. And then we got the Monday night game, which I want to preview right now. Listen, man, the Giants, they suck. Who do you blame? Can't blame OBJ. He's out there playing. You can't blame the receivers. They're out there trying. The offensive line, you know, 
They're a work in progress. Are they any good? No. Can we blame Eli? Maybe. Maybe we can. Maybe we don't. Because if the whole offensive line doesn't help you or give you more than 3.5 seconds, Eli's not a mobile quarterback, so he can't do it. And it's the same story every week with Eli. But I honestly think that Eli needs to get traded to the Jacksonville Jaguars so he could move on and try to win another ring and hopefully retire. We need to, at this point, I'm not saying we have quarterbacks on the team that are the future, but we need to play for a high draft pick so we could try to get maybe the quarterback of the future. I'm honestly going to predict something right now. I'm going to say the Giants are going to continue to lose, get a high draft pick, but they're not going to get a quarterback. I honestly, my gut is telling me that these New York Giants will get a quarterback in the offseason via free agency. I got one quarterback in particular that I think the Giants might go after. And I think they played their hands. They might have played this real good and people are not seeing it. If you recall, Pat Shermer has been off, was the offensive quarterback for the Vikings. At the time, Teddy Bridgewater was the quarterback of that team. He really liked Teddy Bridgewater. And Bridgewater was going to be a good quarterback until he got hurt. Guess who's a free agent next year? That's right. You guessed it. Teddy Bridgewater. He's a backup for the Saints right now. So, what I'm thinking. I don't see Teddy Bridgewater signing with the Saints next year. For the simple fact that Drew Brees still looks good and he'll be there again. And Bridgewater, who was a young, good quarterback, he ain't going to want to take a backseat to nobody. So he's going to take his talents to the next available team. Guess who's going to be looking for a quarterback? There's two teams, the Jaguars and the New York Football Giants. Now, you have to decide, where do you want to play do you want to play for the Jags, who have a good running back in Leonard Fournette? They have a good receiving core, great defense, and might be the opportunity you're looking for to advance yourself to the playoffs, maybe even to championship caliber, maybe Super Bowl caliber, a well-run organization at this point. Or do you want to go play with Odell Beckham Jr., Saquon Barkley, Sterling Shepard, Evan Ingram? What I'm going to be sure is a revamped offensive line and a revamped defense, a younger defense. And Pat Sherman, who's your ex-coach, who you know very well, and it's going to run a system that you're comfortable in. Not only that, Bridgewater is mobile. He looked like he's back to himself when he was with the Jets before getting traded to the Saints. So those are options that he's going to weigh. And I honestly think that the Giants are going to be the team where he lands next year. And c'est la vie, Oswald, to fucking Eli Manning, who I like to sit here and say, thank you, you gave us some good years, you gave us two Super Bowls, but that's it. It's over. Time to move on, bro. I really think that's what's going to happen. But people are not seeing it that way. I am. Because I like to look deep into what's going on around the whole league. And I think that the Jets trading him to the Saints was because they knew that the Giants want him. They don't want to do no business with the Giants. Jets hate the Giants. You know, it's like the Yankees and the Mets. You know, they never want to do deals together. Never going to happen. So, I honestly think that the Giants should trade Eli, play it smart, let the backup quarterback have at it. Let the young one do it. 
right? Lagonia, lasagna, whatever his last name is. We don't do no fact checking at Hood News, but it's sports. So let the rookie in there, let him play, have a meeting with the team, say, look, we're moving to this direction. This is what we're going to try to do. We've got to get a quarterback. Eli's going to Jacksonville. Let's just move on from here. And the team will have a better understanding. I don't think none of the guys will quit. I think they'll play. They'll, they, you know, they'll, they'll say, hey, let's still play hard. Let's prove some of these people wrong who say we suck. Grow to myself. I say you guys suck. And and, and, and move on. We got to move on. So I think that's what's going to happen. And uh, also, the Falcons, who the Giants are playing in Monday Night Football, it's like, damn. Have you guys seen what this team looks like? They're like an up and down. They're like a scale. One minute they up, one minute they down. Julio Jones has not been getting the ball. He's been putting up numbers, but no touchdowns. And Sanu has been the focus point of Matty Ice, a.k.a. Matt Ryan. And I don't get it. I don't understand it. Uh, Maybe they're double teaming him? But he's a big dude. He should be able to get him the ball no matter what. I thought Peckham is, is, is smaller, and he gets double teamed, and he still finds a way to get the ball. So it's like, what's going on there in Atlanta? Why are they not focusing on Julio Jones a little bit more? Maybe they're they doing double team coverage on him. But it is what it is. I'm going to make a quick prediction here. And you guys are going to think I'm crazy. I think the Giants will pull this game off. I think the Giants will win this on a field goal. Matty Ice doesn't play well against teams that are bad. He only plays well against teams that are great or good. Right? He rises up to the challenge. Right? That's what he does. And I think that's what's going to happen tonight. I really do. I wouldn't be surprised if the Falcons lose to the Giants on a field goal. Plus, they got to stop the rookie sensation, who I think is going to be undercover of Madden coming up. Saquon Barkley is just a beast for a rookie. He does it all. And when they decide to trade Eli and get themselves a quarterback, maybe Teddy Bridgewater next year, this team will be good. It may be even dangerous. Uh, so that's my prediction for the Monday night game. I'd like to thank you guys for joining me. Uh, and I want to keep it short and sweet for you guys. And uh, hopefully my co-host, Ice Babe, will be back for my next show and my next review next week. So, And uh, we'll all... And I'll do the Giants review from the Monday night game next week as well. So with that being said, man, I'd like to thank all our fans. And I don't want to call you guys fans. You guys are like a family, okay? So I want to call you guys our listening family for listening to us on Hood News Media, Bodega Sports, you know, the NBA edition, the football edition. I, I, I just, I'm so... Thankful for all of you listening to us everywhere, all over the world, Sweden, Japan, Taiwan, uh, here in the States, you know, Puerto Rico. I want to shout out all of you guys. And if I miss you, I'm sorry, but we love you here at Hood News Media. So please make sure you subscribe, you like, go listen to us on Spotify, on iTunes, on Podbean. Listen to us wherever you want to listen to us. Just listen to us. Because we love you. And uh, somebody sent me an email. I'll give you a shout out on one of my podcasts. You have a question. I'll answer the question on a- any of those podcasts. Any of them. Be it be her stories. Or, or maybe you want me to review a show that you like. You want me to watch it. I'll review it. But send me a question. 
at hoodnewsmedia at gmail.com. That's hoodnewsmedia, hoodnews with a Z at gmail.com. Hit me up on Instagram, BXLU. Hit me up on Facebook by the same name, BXLU. Hit up Ken Dogs on IG at Hood News. Hit up Ice Baby at Hood News. IG and Facebook. Hit us up. Say something. We'll respond. Because we not too cocky or too full of ourselves to say what's up to our listening fans. Or should I say listening family. So, peace. See you next week. And hope the Giants win tonight against the Falcons. And if they do win, I'm going to hit up the uh, IG Live on Hundus. So for now, thank you. We love you. Peace.